We're talking F1 Brazil uh, 2024 and a lot going on. Uh, this is a series that uh, will end next month. So uh, they're on a nice little run here, CJ. Uh, this is uh, the last race, right? Before they time out. Uh, last race, and then we'll get a two-week break before we head to Las Vegas for the second race there, another street course race, and that, quite frankly, is the outlier of these last six races that we've been talking about since we came back uh, for this Western Hemisphere swing. So last week, it was uh, a, a, another race where Max Verstappen was not victorious, but Lando Norris was not victorious as well, and... I guess the big story was Max Verstappen, his penalties. Um, look, th there's the thing in F1 that happens that just doesn't happen in NASCAR. And again, it's obvious the cars are just, it's like riding a bicycle compared to a truck in NASCAR. You know, you're not going to ram your bike into another guy in his bike. You know, you might as well just call it a day. So, uh, but that, and that's a negative in my mind because you want to see, you know, you want to see a driver being aggressive, but it's hard to be an aggressive driver in F1 because this is what happens. Yet it's to Max Verstappen's advantage that even though he gets penalized, hey, anything I could do to just make sure Lando Norris doesn't win, I'll take a couple penalties. Yeah, uh, a lot of opinions out there, most of them against Verstappen. And <laughs> by... By the letter of the law, he got what he deserved. So, yes, sure. he forced Norris off the track. Yes, he was off the track and, and gained his position. But I have to say, to your point, I am also not a fan of the fact that you can't aggressively drive. I, I think Lando Norris is equally incented as Max Verstappen was to push Norris off the track. I think Norris is equally as incented to go on to the outside on a place that he has no way of making the pass because... Therefore, he's in position, and if he gets pushed off, then Verstappen's going to get penalized by the letter of the law. Um, I, I think that the rules need some clarification. I think there needs to be some judgment. There was no way um, that Norris, even though he was ahead at the apex, it was still, Verstappen still had the line. There was no way Norris wasn't going to go off the track. And yes, Verstappen pushed him off the track. I'm not saying that that didn't happen, but I'm saying that the speed that Norris was going in at the turn and where he was at the apex, there was no way he was not going off the track as well. Um, and yet nothing happened to Norris. He kind of benefited, though he didn't win the race. Uh, I'm not sure, quite honestly, though, uh, with the gains that Ferrari has made over the past couple of weeks that they've shown, I'm not quite convinced that uh, Norris would have been up there. Yeah, he was closing in, <clears throat> but closing in and making a pass uh, just as we were talking about between Norris and Verstappen, closing in and making a pass are two different things. So uh, who knows how it would have turned out. Uh, that said, Ferrari is coming up the Constructors' Championship with a vengeance. Uh, they are very close to actually taking the lead. They are past uh, Red Bull Racing at this point. Uh, they are uh, 29 points behind uh, McLaren Mercedes and more double podium finishes with wins are going to put Ferrari in the championship uh, position for the constructors title. And as we've talked about all season, that is the one that really matters to all of the teams uh, up and down the grid. All right. Let's take a look at the futures. What do you think the numbers last week? What was it? Was it plus 550 last week? Yes. Uh, so I think it probably dropped back to the negative 250, negative Big 150. Big drop. Yep. Okay. I think so, because I think because Norris made up points, uh, so he made up, I think, what, 10 points. He's like 47 behind, uh, but there's still four races left. He's got to close much faster than 10 points a race, which, again, <laughs> Verstappen's got to have bigger trouble than he had uh, last week if Norris is to catch him. And, yes, we have two sprint races, one of them being this weekend left. Uh, so there's a little bit extra in there, but uh, we know that Verstappen has been a points machine and he's not given up as much as Norris needs. So I think um, people probably are starting to figure out the math a little bit more, uh, but I still think uh, Verstappen's the heavy favorite. All right. So you're going to say what? 250, 275-ish? Okay. Yep. All right. Let's see what we got. No, they're figuring out the math. Yeah. Now that we're getting really close. <laughs> yes, uh, that that's about right. I, I mean, it, it's still, 
yes, Norris is making up ground. Yes, Norris will continue to make up ground for these last four races. But as long as Verstappen keeps doing what he's doing, like I kept saying, like we keep saying, it's his. So, yeah, you, unfortunately, you know, we talked about it last week where your best chance when it went down uh, heavily to the 500 range, you probably missed your chance to get in. Um, it looks as though you have, because unless something major again happens and you get that brief window for a week where we're stopping scores, no points or whatever, uh, they're going to they're going to stay there because mathematically, that's just the way it's playing out. And look, if you've gone our way and depending on how much money you did invest, because, again, the only way to invest money. On, well, look, there were a couple of chances that you had at minus low twos and then even plus 165, whatever it was. If you took them on either of those weeks when we recommended it. And of course, if it was a big enough number, you can go in and hedge a little bit on Lando Norris just in case, which is what makes it really worth, uh, worth uh, it's, it's worth it. Uh, because, you know, again, you'd have to have invested a, a decent amount on Max, but that's the only way that you were going to make any money on him anyway. You know, you're not going to make some small little investment on, on someone at minus 200 or whatever it was in between those two. So um, you should be able to put a little bit of money on Norris and, uh, if something happens, uh, you know, whether or not you make your money back, uh, you should be able to make a decent amount back even. So it's worth it. Um, uh, but only a little bit. I wouldn't go crazy. I have a lot better hedge bets than this one because, again, I just I just I don't see the math adding up. Uh, it's, it'd be one of those uh, once in a lifetime kind of situations if Lando Norris was still able to pull this out. So I know hard to believe that they think Charles Leclerc is at 25 can make up uh, 71 points. <laughs> <laughs> what does he need for Stappen and Norris to like crash in every race and him to win all four? Yeah, I, 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 the only theory I can think of behind that is uh, he's what, uh, 24 behind Norris. So maybe they think Verstappen does crash out the rest of the way and uh, it becomes a two way fight between Norris and Leclerc and Ferrari stepping up. So I, I still don't think that's 25 to one. It should be more like 100 plus. <clears throat> all right. Who do you think is going to be favored this week? Uh, this week, I think it's going to be co-favorites between Leclerc and Norris. Oh, okay. Well, Lando Norris is a little bit over two to one, 240. That's, that's better than I expected. I expected them to be equal negative 150-ish. No, I wasn't wrong in the one, two. And where do you think Max is? Uh, Max is probably 350. Yeah, signs oh. would be. Signs is third. <laughs> 650. Yeah, that's probably about right. I, I don't think that Verstappen is going to be favorite to win, probably in, in contention for a podium, but uh, I think probably more realistically he's going to be a fourth place type of finisher. Ferrari, like I said, um, they've their upgrades have have really paid off. Um, they brought uh, they've really actually pointed back to the upgrades that they brought back in Monza, uh, but I think starting in Austin was when they really started to figure out how to apply them. And I know they had some upgrades in Austin as well, um, and and they seem to have the speed. So we talked about Ferrari having that one lap speed from a qualifying standpoint to be able to get themselves in the mix for pole positions, but then over a a race distance they lost out to mclaren and red bull i think the upgrades and the path that they're on now clearly have changed that around um brazil is a little bit different of a track though uh than it has been for mexico and austin so we're going to see you know whether that's true for ferrari through brazil as well probably a few more kind of slow switchback corners here uh than the past couple of tracks at um, at Brazil has more of uh, the slower corners, I should say, uh, but it does have very long straight. And that's why I think Verstappen probably is not going to be in contention for the win because Verstappen actually, one of the things, one of the major complaints they had besides the tire grip and getting the hard tire to work in Mexico, one of the big complaints from them was just top line speed and lack of power. And the theory for that is that uh, Verstappen's using an old engine that has high mileage and as engines wear, 
the peak power output goes down on them. So they are actually considering for this weekend changing out that engine. And if they do, then Verstappen gets a grid penalty and he won't be able to start where he qualifies. He'll start further back in the grid. So watch this space. Um, I don't think Verstappen's going to be in for the win. I would put Norris and Leclerc, Ferrari and McLaren, uh, those three, I would probably put them all even. So this week, I do think that the odds are right. Um, I don't know how to bet that when you got three favorites that are pretty much even, yeah, though. Uh, I'll go for the futures. Pretty much. It's not. It's never good when you have to decide on one out of three, uh, unless you really particularly like that specific driver. Um, exactly right. But, Yeah. Um, but none of these stick out one more than the other, huh? Norris and Leclerc, I would put even as the favorites. Signs a little bit less just because winning back-to-back. -back and, and Ferrari's probably a little bit more of an unknown this week uh, as well. So maybe maybe I give Norris just the edge out of uh, him and Leclerc for that reason. I don't think Signs goes back-to-back. -back. I think Leclerc probably steps up. Uh, but since Ferrari may be a little bit unknown with this different type of track, whereas McLaren has performed at slower speed corner tracks this year, maybe give Norris the edge. Okay. And then uh, any long shots worth uh, grabbing? I mean, Piastri is up there with Verstappen. I think Piastri is a good long shot because same reason as, as Norris. McLaren's been pretty good on these types of tracks. Other circuits like this with the slower corners throughout the year. Piastri has won a couple races this year as well. Uh, so no reason he wouldn't be in the mix for the podium. I think uh, that's probably a good value. I would put him above Verstappen, to be quite honest with you. Uh, the other two that you got on the, the screen there, I think it's worth mentioning Lewis Hamilton and George Russell. They have been in contention on occasion, certain races this year. And I was predicting um, probably four or five weeks ago that they were on uh, starting to figure things out and on a charge forward. And I think that they were until they had multiple crashes over the past couple of weeks. And unfortunately, those crashes are expensive. And with the rules the way that they are in Formula One being at the end of the season, Mercedes actually came out and said that they are near their cost cap for the year. So the crash damage is expensive. They're not going to be able to bring the upgrades that they otherwise would have planned for the end of the season to be able to push Hamilton and Russell further up to make it more of a competition. So I think at this point, you can probably write off Lewis Hamilton and George Russell, which means I would draw the line at Oscar Piastri. And what's the rule? Uh, in, what is that in place for? What are they trying to accomplish? So they're trying to make it make more parity throughout the field. So it used to be, I, I want to say... You know, the top teams would spend something close to $500 million um, a year to make their cars competitive. Uh, now the cost cap, I want to say, is something like 135, and that applies to all teams. So if you were a Ferrari, if you were a McLaren, you, if you were a Mercedes, and you had all these resources at your disposal to be able to invest and upgrade different cars, new engines, new parts, et cetera, et cetera, you would just spend, 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 spend. Uh, to get your car to be faster. And you'd, you'd earn that back through winning the championship or your points, et cetera, et cetera. But the smaller teams never could keep up. So by putting a cost cap in, uh, it enables the teams that are at the bottom of the grid to be a little bit more competitive, be a little bit more predictable in their finances and what their sponsorship needs are year over year. Uh, so it makes the sport overall a little bit more stable. As we know, Formula One doesn't have great parity, uh, but quite honestly, that mid-pack battle with the, with the cost cap that is in place has definitely ramped up so you're not seeing as many teams fold you're not seeing as many teams not qualify because they're so slow and you are seeing a much better battle in the midfield so i think the cost cap for that for the longevity of the sport is paying off but certainly at the front of the field uh it has uh dampered a little bit of the ability for teams like mercedes to be able to catch up if they end up getting in the situation like they're in now so basically it doesn't mean that they're going to uh, have any issues when they get to the track this week. It's just that if they encounter anything, they're not going to be able to like, oh, we can make this car faster or we can improve upon this. Well, now you can't. So you're stuck That's with great. what you have. Yeah, I think um, back at their base in England, they'd be doing wind tunnel testing. They might come up with a new front wing. They might come up with a new rear wing. Okay. It's 
little bit late for a new floor, but things like that are also very expensive and it takes design time, manufacturing time and money and testing money to be able to bring those parts. And by the way, just the cost of the part alone goes into your cap, cost cap as well. So one of the crashes that I spoke about that, that's causing them to, to, to take this tack now to be able to finish out the season without breaching the cost cap, they actually had to write off the chassis. So they basically had to pay for an entire new car, uh, which, by the way, is quite expensive, several million dollars. And when you're talking about a cost cap of only 135 through an entire season, you still have four races to go. Like you said, they can't bring upgrades. They can't spend their money on upgrades. What if they have another crash? Yeah. And then pay for that. And they just shot themselves in the foot because they spent their money on an upgrade. So okay. they're in a really situation that's why i think hamilton and russell they've got what they've got for the end of the season so they're going to have to make do with it i think their points paying cars you know top 10 without question you know sixth through eighth position probably is about where they'll finish out the rest of the season but they're not going to be able to challenge ferrari mclaren or red bull and you're going to go then with uh, lando this week We'll go with Lando just by a very small margin like i said at the beginning i i, I find it very hard to choose at this point between Leclerc and Lando, uh, but based on the fact that McLaren has a longer history throughout this season of performing on tracks like Brazil, uh, and Ferrari doesn't, Ferrari has only started stepping it up really in the past two weeks or so, three weeks or so, um, I'm going to go with uh, Norris just by a very small margin. All right, so that will wrap it up. We will be back in uh, two weeks. Uh, two weeks, yes, and we will preview Las Vegas, a return to the United States before they head to Qatar and Abu Dhabi to close out the season. And uh, when we uh, return in two weeks, uh, we'll be talking F1, F1, and F1. So <laughs> Correct. Be no NASCAR, NASCAR will be since done. Yeah. <laughs> As will Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah almost like Christmas. All right, don't forget, check out in this video you're watching right now, there's a link in the description uh, for CJ's uh, fantasy report from rotowire.com. So make sure you read that. If you're a NASCAR fan, there is a video already up on the site for our preview of this week's race uh, in Martinsville. And uh, also a video where we're going to be taking a look after qualifying in practice on Saturday at Martinsville. So two NASCAR videos uh, one already up on the channel. The second one will be up on the channel sometime late on Saturday, mid to late on Saturday. And we'll be back talking F1 again in a couple of weeks. So CJ, appreciate your time as always. Thanks for having me. Have a good one.